Hello guys, uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives, uh, still on our engineering science N3. Uh, this is friction from the question paper, which was written in November 2023 exams. All right, so we just want to check the questions uh, on friction Them, We were given the first question 4.1 to define the term angle of rest. So what is it that we understand uh, by the term angle of rest. So we know that the angle of rest is the, this is the greatest angle of slope that can, uh, that can actually be reached before the body will start moving freely down the plane. So you can uh, have this as in simpler terms of 4.1, thus it, it is the greatest. So this is actually the greatest angle, uh, the greatest angle of slope. Uh, that can be reached, so it can be reached before, that can be reached before a body will start move, before a body will start moving freely. So the body will be moving freely down the slope, all right, down the slope. Okay, so that is the idea. Uh, it is actually the plan, and we just consider this as a plan, which is gonna be easier that way. All right, down the, the plan. Okay, so considering this, uh, we've got what? The angle, which is the term, the angle of rest, uh, right? Uh, I think this is a clear definition, guys. We are, uh, we are this one, we are used it to, we've been, we have talked about this so many times. Then there's this question here. I explained this question, uh, I think uh, that was long, long, long time back. So I'm just going to explain it in another way. I just hope you understand me again in this way so that you, it's, you bring comparison, you bring up and see the method that is easier for you. Okay. So here we are given that um, they've got uh, FIG2 shows a body with a mass of 50 kilograms. So this body that we have, is, it has got a mass. Take note there, we have got a mass, not uh, the weight. This is the mass that we are given there, 50 kilograms, uh, is placed on an incline forming an angle of 30 degrees. That is where you are, all right, here. So with the horizontal, okay, then the coefficient of friction in that case is given as 0 0.36. So you also have the coefficient of what? Of friction. Then a force Q, take note, a force Q, there's a force here Q that is applied, making an angle of 20 degrees upwards, the, the what? Uh, upwards with the plane is required. This is the most important. Is required to what? to pull the body up the plan. So this is taking up the body, the plan, because it can be required to push this down, all right? It can be required like that, but this time it is what? Pulling up. So as it is going up, I told you guys, we're gonna have the forces that will act as this is going up, which is this one, which is uh, a horizontal, component according to this side because we're going to have something like this so this is going to go up again so remember we form a right angle triangle so according to q this is on the opposite this is our opposite this is the hypotenuse so you can apply this as the vertical component which is q the sine of what of 20 degrees this is the horizontal component from this triangle which is 20 uh, which is q the cos of what the cos of 20 so this is q the cos of 20 degrees since it's on the adjacent. But this here, as it is moving, it is moving perpendicular to the plane. It moves at perpendicular, all right? The Q cos of 20, as it is moving, it is moving parallel to the plane. Q cos of 20, it moves parallel to the plane, all right? So you must be able to understand the difference that is happening there, okay? Uh, sorry for that, this is at 20 degrees there, okay? The other thing is that here, we also have, uh, as we are going, as we have got this force, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the, the mass that we are having here, we're gonna have the weight component according to this and opposed by the normal reaction, all right? Opposed by the normal reaction in this case. So let's say this is our normal reaction. It's just gonna be opposed uh, this side like this. All right, so let's also have this one, 30 degrees here. Uh, according to 30 degrees, we know that this is 
our uh, perpendicular part, all right? We've got the perpendicular force in this case here, which is our F perpendicular uh, or FC, F perpendicular, the one that is at adjacent. So this one is the weight. This is our weight here. So it's going to be the weight cos of theta, all right? Remember perpendicular, guys, cos of what? Theta, which is 30 degrees. And here, this is our parallel component, uh, which is going to be the weight, the sine of the angle there, which is what? Which is 30 degrees, same as this one. And this is our weight. And we understand that the weight is equivalent to the mass times what? The gravitational acceleration. So this is simply mg here. This is simply mg here, all right? Because weight is equal to mg. And on our diagram here, we are going to have uh, the frictional force uh, which is uh, also, yeah, remember we've got the parallel, uh, which is our FS or F parallel, and the frictional force, they'll be in the same direction because we are as we are going up, we shall be opposed down, all right? We shall be opposed down. As we are going up, we shall be opposed going down, okay? So that is just a brief about the diagram. But the question here uh, was 4.21, uh, calculate the component Q, parallel to the plane. So the component of Q here, this is Q, parallel to the plane. Remember this our plane is like this. So to be parallel, we're talking about this one, this maintaining same distance. So this is our parallel component, which is Q, cos of what? Cos of 20. From the component of Q, the one that is parallel is the Q cos, uh, cos 20. Not this one. This one is perpendicular to the plane. It meets with the plane at what? At 90 degrees. We want the one that is parallel to the plane like that. So is this one for what? For cos, all right? Uh, that is um, uh, 4.21, all right? So let us just have it here, uh, 4.21. So this one is just gonna be Q uh, cos of 20. Like I said, this is Q cos 20, which is uh, as a decimal, cos 20 is 0 0.3, 969, which is going to give us 0, 0.94 times Q. All right. So that is the one uh, parallel. When it is perpendicular, talking about Q sine 20. Okay. Uh, then 4.2 to the gravity component parallel to the plane. The gravity, we are now talking about here where there is a mass, where we're going to consider the weight component considered here. All right, where we are considering the weight component, but they are saying parallel to the plane. Which one is parallel? Parallel is this side. Remember, this is our plane. So parallel is like this. We are talking about this F parallel, which is W sine of what? W sine of 30 degrees. That is the parallel, the gravity component in this case. All right, uh, that's our gravity component in this case. So 4.22, we are talking about F parallel in this case, or some they can use FS like that. All right, remember we said it's W sine of theta where w is simply mg times the sine of theta so it's the mass times the gravitational acceleration the mass of 50 times the gravitational acceleration from your information sheet that's 9,8 the sine of theta according to where it is the sine is the angle there of what 30 degrees not 20 20 is for q so this one is 30 degrees all right so if you multiply this you're going to obtain 245 uh newton right so this is the one uh, parallel, okay? Then the gravity component perpendicular to the plane, the one that is perpendicular now. So this is our plane, as we saw previously, that perpendicular is going to meet at 90 degrees. So the perpendicular one is the F perpendicular as it is, all right, which is W cos theta. Uh, that's our perpendicular in this case. So that's 4.23. All right, let us just give it uh, even aside here. All right, 4.23. That's 4.23. So that's our F perpendicular as it is, or some they use FC like that. All right, which we say it is W, the cosine of theta, and this represents mg. That's the mass of 50 times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times the cosine of the angle. Just take this as it is uh, times. Why am I writing 30? This is the sine of 30, the sine, sine, sine of 30 there. So this is the cos of 30 degrees, all right? So that is uh, the idea of the question, all right? So if you, are to if you are to simplify this, you were going to obtain 424 
0.352 in, in Newton, right? That's the idea then. That's the idea of the question, okay? That's the idea of the question. Uh, we have to know our components as they are. Uh, so this is for the gravity, all right? If there's a component Q, Q perpendicular to the plane is this one. If it is Q perpendicular to the plane, you take Q sine theta by the, they never asked about this one. So that's why we never answered this one. Okay, this is the question that I said, I'm gonna answer this in another way because I explained this another way previously. Okay, they want us to find the magnitude of Q. Okay, the magnitude of Q. This is what we have here. This is Q. So what you're going to do is that, uh, the, this is the idea. All right, you consider your forces, all right? You have got forces that are, uh, or the components that are parallel to the plane. All right, those ones that are parallel to the plane and those ones that are perpendicular to the plane. So you're gonna formulate equations from there. All right, let's start with those ones that are parallel to the plane. This is four point, this is another way. So you're gonna, I want you to take it this way whenever you want to calculate for an unknown value. So that's another way like I, I, I explained. So this is what you do. You take those components parallel to the plane. All right, so you're gonna take components uh, parallel to the plan, uh, parallel to the plan, but also considering the direction, all right? Because remember, we are pulling this object up. We are taking this object up, it is being pulled up. So as it is going up, it means the most controlling side is the one that is controlling, which is this one, all right? Remember we said parallel, so you're talking about this one, Q cos of 20, it's parallel to the plan, all right? Remember guys, that was our parallel component on Q here. Still remember? So. We are talking about Q sine of what uh, Q cos of 20. This one that is going that is going this direction. This is the one that is pulling it up. So meaning to say Q cos of 20 degrees, which is our parallel component here. Uh, Q, the cosine of 20 degrees, must be equal to those ones still in the same parallel. As long they are in the parallel but they are now opposing this one. Which ones are opposing, but they are parallel to the plane. All right. There is the friction, the, uh, the parallel component to, to, the, to the gravity gravity component, and also the frictional force. These two, they are opposing in that direction. These two, all right? They are opposing in this direction. So they are going to add them together because they are both, they are opposing. So we saw that we've got uh, the parallel component and the frictional force there. All right, we can bring up this one because we calculated this before. Uh, the parallel component, remember, we got 245 here. So you're going to have this as 245. All right, so this is uh, Q sine 40. And also here, Q cos of 20, we got this one. Uh, remember, Q cos 20, we said it can be written in simplified form as 0, 0.94 times Q. So it's 0, 0.94 times what? Times Q. So this is going to be uh, 0, 0.94 times Q is equal to F parallel. We say this is 245. So that's 245 plus, we do not have uh, the value for the what? The frictional force. So you can just transpose this. It's going to be 0, 0.94 Q minus 245 if we transpose this which is equal to the frictional force so simply meaning to say the frictional force is equal to 0, 0.94 uh q minus 245 remember we are supposed to find the value of q so if you check here we have got formulated an equation for the frictional force in terms of q the one that we are supposed to calculate all right we do the same thing with the perpendicular components. Like I said, this is a new method that I want you to learn, guys. You do the same thing with the perpendicular components. Let's have our perpendicular components here, this side. All right, so this side, you're gonna have our perpendicular components. Leave it like that, you understand me. Perpendicular components. Perpendicular uh, components or components perpendicular. Okay, all right, guys, I've written perpendicular, but it was supposed to be components perpendicular, all right? So the components that are perpendicular, if we check on our diagram here, we have got this one, we said is perpendicular to the plane, Q sine of 20, sine of 20 degrees. 
It's perpendicular because this is our plan. So as it reaches the plan, it meets at 90 degrees. But also there is a normal reaction going up. Okay? There's a normal reaction going up. So you've got the Q sine of 20 going up, the normal reaction going up. Opposed with what? The perpendicular, the perpendicular, perpendicular here. This is the one that is opposing perpendicular component, which is FC. So meaning to say these ones going up on top should be equal to this one down. Isn't it, guys? That is the idea. This one facing up together, they are facing up, they are on top. We add them together. So R, which is our normal reaction plus uh, that other part, uh, we say it is going to be the normal reaction plus what? Uh, this other perpendicular, this one, this perpendicular Q, sine of what? 20. So that's Q. They are, they are added together. Q, sine of 20 degrees must be equal to another perpendicular down there, which is the one opposing, which is our perpendicular, uh, the gravity component perpendicular to the plane, which is F perpendicular, uh, FC or F perpendicular, which is the one that we calculated before. Remember, we calculated this. Uh, so let us just write the formula first. So it's going to be FC or F perpendicular, right? So that will be R plus Q sine 20. We can simplify uh, this. Uh, all right, we can simplify uh, sine of 20. is going to be something like 0, 0,342 like that times Q is equal to FC. We calculated the perpendicular component FC here or F parallel. We got this value before. We calculated this 424,352. So this was 424,352. I, I want you to see the magic that is just going to happen here. The miracle that is just going to happen very, very soon. So if we see, we cannot relate R to anything. There's no way. So just let make R the subject. So R is going to be transposed that to the other side. It's going to be 424. So this is 424,352 minus 0, 0,3. If we transpose this, it's going to be a negative 0, 0,342 times Q. All right. So if we check properly, there's something that is happening here. From the first part, it was impossible for us to find a, this, this value. There's no way. Here also, there's no substitute for this. We do not have the answer for it, but we, it is an expression in terms of Q. And also, the, 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 this uh, uh, frictional force in terms of Q also, as you can see, it's written in terms of Q. So you've got the normal reaction in terms of Q, the frictional force in terms of Q. But can these two be related with one simple equation? Is it possible? That is the question. How? That is the question. How? All right. We understand that uh, the coefficient of friction, because we are given them the coefficient of friction, and uh, we understand that the coefficient, uh, let me write it here, the coefficient of friction is simply equivalent to the frictional force over the normal reaction, isn't it? So meaning to say that we have got this, the coefficient of friction, we are given this as what? This is uh, from our information, 0, 0.36. So we are saying 0, 0.36, our coefficient of friction is equal to, all right? Our frictional force in terms of Q. We got our frictional force here in terms of Q, 0, 0.94 Q minus 245. Over the normal reaction in terms of Q, which is 424 comma 352 minus 0, 0,342Q like that. That's an equation that we have formed consisting of Q only. Now we've got an equation in terms of Q only. And we, are, we need to calculate Q. So forget about science N3, forget about this. We are now back to mathematics. How do we solve for Q? This is an equation. So you can cross multiply. This is same as over one. So you can cross multiply. So the 0, 0,36 is going to multiply everything here. So that's 0, 0,36 into the bracket of 424,352 minus uh, 0, 0,342Q is equal to one times this. One is going to multiply everything. So you're going to get this 0, 0,94Q minus 245 as it is. 
So to find the Q, as we can see, guys, there's a need for us to expand brackets, collecting of like terms, uh, this and that. So if you multiply everything here by uh, uh, 0, 0,36, that will be 0, 0,36 times uh, for this value, it's going to be 1,5, something like that. So it's going to be 152, uh, 767. All right. Okay. Uh, minus, if you multiply this to this one, it's going to be 0, 0,123. I'm just rounding off to three decimal places, guys, all right, so that we do not have confused answers. All right. So this is equal to 0, 0,94 Q minus uh, 245. So as you can see, we've got a Q here. Uh, where am I going now? Okay, sorry for that. As you can see, we have got a Q here and another Q here. So I'm just going to transpose this to the other hand. And also the 245, I'm going to transpose it to the other hand there so that these two can add. So it will be 397,76 if we add these two is equal to if you also add these two on Q, 0, 0,94 Q plus 0, 0,123 Q, we're gonna get 1,063 Q. So to find Q, just divide by 1,063, uh, 1,063. So this gives us uh, the value of Q, right? So that's our Q in that case. So as you can see, it's not different from the method that I've been talking about previously. Uh, only that I think this one is uh, a little bit straightforward. I don't know what you say about this. And our Q is in kilonewtons um, as the other forces or other components here were in what? Were in kilonewtons. Which other part was in kilonewton? Nothing was in kilonewton in that case. So this is just a newton, 345 newton. The other forces was just a newton. So this will be 300 and uh, 45, uh, 374,193 Newton, like that, it's just like that, okay? So that is the idea of the question. So guys, as you can see, it's a repetition, yes, but now we are just trying to find different ways of having it or different explanations. So just work with the parallel components, all right? Uh, components parallel to the plane, then components perpendicular to the plane, but considering to say, which way are you, which direction are you going? The direction that you're going is positive. We are going up, we are pulling it up. So it's positive. The one that is going up on the other side, you're supposed to subtract. So we equate them on the other hand, added together, the ones going up and down. The same on the perpendicular, there are those ones that are perpendicular going up and those ones that are going down. So you have to equate them, formulate an equation which can co which consists of the two, the frictional force that you formulated here and the normal reaction that you formulated here from where the coefficient of friction. You connect now the two equations in terms of Q. Then you can solve for the unknown value. That's how they ask this question. So you have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. All right, so we shall see more questions to come uh, as we are revising. But for now, that's it, guys, from Mason African Motives till we meet again.